I love it. So I love to start everything out too with uh, celebrations to get you and all of us in a positive mindset. So the viewers, you, me. So um, Christina, what can we celebrate with you today? What's good in your world? What is good in my world? Well, a uh, little plug. Uh, I'm doing something called the Summer Marketing Academy on my brand new Facebook group. And I've just been having wonderful people on just, you know, marketing can get so like pressurized, like, oh, I need to get new clients. So yeah. I basically decided let's have some fun, wear summer hats, drink iced tea and talk marketing, you know, so the summer marketing Academy is just going really well. And if you're curious and you're listening to this, it's just the innate marketing geniuses.com just go, or sorry, on Facebook, it's a group. So yeah. Very cool. I love, I love the theme with the hats and like making it fun. Um, the one thing that I always tell people is that I don't do anything unless it's fun. So when you put a spin on marketing and make it fun, that's always more intriguing than like, Hey, let's just talk about this thing that, you know, we all have to do in order to get to where we want to go, but it's, it's dry and it's boring and nobody wants to do that. So I love your take on that. That's great. <laughs> I actually have sort of forced myself to wear glamorous outfits while I do it. You know, I never, th these are the clothes you never wear. Where you're going to see it right now, right? Exactly. Like they're all like virtual. Where else? Why else? Why do you think I'm wearing some bling today? See, I love it. Where's my bling? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's so fun. No, that's so great. Congratulations on your, on your new program. That sounds awesome. Um, so I'm going to give you a proper introduction so everyone knows who we're talking to here. Um, so I'll just, I'll read off your bio and then we'll just start the conversation from there. So Christina is a branding and marketing expert. If you didn't catch that, um, she's been featured on Today Show and NBC News as an expert on transformational professionals and real estate agents. She has developed a proprietary process that identifies innate marketing genius and business owners based on the two worldwide field studies she conducted. Her work connects authentic messaging to practical field tactics, which translates to relevant marketing and high quality clients. Who doesn't love that? She also is a total founding father's geek which is why she loves Boston and wrote a book about these guys that got her on the History Channel twice. That's super amazing. So Christina, you are located in Boston, Massachusetts, correct? Yeah, just north of Boston in Marblehead. Awesome. Is that where you're originally from? I'm from Connecticut. Okay. But yeah, I just made my way up here because I love John Adams and Paul Revere and I just kept visiting up here and yeah. I just ended up here. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that, you, you know, the things that you really enjoy drew you to where you are. Definitely. That's amazing. Cool. So, um, so as we get started, I love to start with something, you know, relatable or just like fun facts about you that you might want to share with us that maybe we wouldn't know, just like stalking your profile picture or something like that, right? Like, so what is something you would love to share with the audience? Sure. So, Recently, and this actually is on my Facebook page, but I want to share it anyway because I love it. Uh, recently, I took up biking, like long distance biking, and I have kind of a fancy bike, you know, like a road bike. And it's really hard to get a dog on a road bike, right? It's not, doesn't have the wide handlebars. You can't put a basket up front. So for a year, I've had to figure out like, all right, I need to make this work. How am I going to make this work? Right. And there's, it just is not that easy. So I had to like jerry rig the thing in the back of the bike, find the right basket because there's so many options. And then someone had to install all the stuff and tell me oh how to use it. You know, like there were so many steps you wouldn't even think of. And finally, I got my bike out. I got my dog out and we went on our first mission about a month and a half ago. <laughs> and I now officially bike 20 plus miles with my little dog in the back of my bike and it is like I just did this in Vermont last weekend for the second time and it is I mean wow. who doesn't want to say hello to a gal on a bike with the cutest dog behind her like it's always a little surprise when I'm coming down the street People are like, wait what 
what what kind of dog do you have? And and he what is a Norwich. Have? He's a Norwich Terrier. They look like Yorkies, but they're really hefty and they're built like a tank. Oh, <laughs> so he's super cute. He looks like a little stuffed animal. If he cooperates, I'll um. He's literally right underneath me. So I'm <laughs> trying to like That's let adorable. him nap or should I? Twenty show miles. Him? Sorry. Twenty miles. 20 plus miles. Yeah. I want to get more than that, but like, yeah, it was, it was an adventure with him. That's amazing. That is amazing. I love that you called it a mission. <laughs> <laughs> it was. That's yeah. so cool. I didn't know if he was going to like jump out of the basket, you know, like he's secure in there, yeah. but he, he's bonkers after loud trucks and we were biking by some loud trucks, you know? Right. So Yeah. But it was definitely fine. some challenges to work through and see, you know, how both of you reacted during those kinds of unexpected things when vehicles and loud things. And I mean, yeah, because you could get startled and then like, yeah, that's, that's really cool though. I love that you had to figure out the process to get the bike situated and like all of it. That's and I would even say, I'm so excited about this, that if somebody's listening to this and they're like, but I want to take my cute dog on my road bike, just message me because I have the hookup for you. Yeah, Seriously, you know. it was a massive research process. So like, I got it all figured out. That's great. That's so great. Yes. So anyone that has a dog that's like, <laughs> that would be super fun to know. Definitely make sure that you're connecting with Christina after this. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> great insights. Um, so, so let's see, we're fun. Okay, so let's see. Let's dive in and start talking about your story around fear. So um, I always talk about how fear is always present with us. It's really the mindset and how we approach it and work through or grow through the situations and the challenges that are presented to us. Um, so Christina, I'm going to let you just kind of like share your story about, you know, what's that significant time in your life that came to you when I was you know, asking the question, what, what in your life has presented fear in a significant way that significant way that held you back from living your life fully at one point? Yep. And that's an easy one to answer because there's one moment in particular that really stands out. And that is when I lost all sources of income in like you know, the space of a month where it's like, oh, I'm working on this project, I'm doing this project, I'm doing this, I'm doing that gone in a and, month yeah pretty much in a month and not really seeing a future mapped out yeah. right like oh there is no money coming in and cue the panic attacks um i just wasn't in the habit of going out i know a lot of independent contractors are like used to it i'm used to it now too like i have my whole life set up so that i constantly have a full business but that was right. not the case at the time <laughs> so how long ago was this? Um... That was in 2014. So about okay. six years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so how long have you been an entrepreneur? Pretty much since 2009. But at that okay. point I was kind of switching direction. It was very clear to me that it was time to, you know, to try something new. Um, I was doing youth speaking. So, um, you know, around the founding fathers, I wrote that book, I was on TV, et cetera, et cetera. But it just seemed like, yeah, it's time for something else now. So I didn't really have a clear path at the time. Wow. Yeah. And so many people can relate to that right now, for sure. That, you know, so many things just like shift and then it's like, well, what now? And how, you know, do you pivot from the space that you thought was you know, where you were going to be. And then all of a sudden the lights get turned out and it's just totally shifted from there. So, so tell us a little bit more about that scenario, right? Like actually, before we go on from there, can you tell me like label your fear? What, it, what was your fear during that time? I would say I was really afraid that I wouldn't be able to make money again and therefore I would starve and therefore I would die. Like I would be homeless pretty quickly. Yeah. And also there was a shame element to it. Like I'm surrounded by people who are successful and it's like, wow, you're just worth nothing. Like you're not even close to being part of this group anymore because you failed. Like wow. that did you, did you actually like get that feeling from the people in your life? Like it wasn't like they were being, you know, 
mean about any, it was, it was, was more just like in my your own, mind. yeah, it was my own personal pride. Like I don't even deserve to be here. Oh yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. That relationship is a huge thing that I love for us to touch on too. Like during these transitional periods in our life, because so many things must grow and change with us that relationships is the big part of how we evolve from our situations and our challenges in our lives. So um, knowing, you know, sometimes people really do change the way they perceive people during those challenges and how we work through them. And sometimes, you know, they grow with us. So that's, that's a really good point. And like how it was really more of you and your mindset around the situation because your circle of people are higher stature. They are very successful and you yourself had success before. So it's like, okay, how, how am I going to get that back in this certain scenario? So um, walk us through a little bit more of the situation that you were in. Like, how did that happen in a month's time? And like, tell us more about your story. Yeah. So I was, um, again, I had a few different projects. Like I was a youth speaker, but also, you know, doing some, marketing for other companies, right? Just cause like everything I'd been, I just have been doing marketing for like 20 years. So okay. I can always bring in a little extra income, you know, just working for other people and helping them like with their website and with, you know, the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. And um, it just, a few of those things were like, nope, no more and gone forever. And honestly, I didn't really want to do that stuff anyway. So that's what scared me. Cause it's like, yeah, I could always find something like that, maybe, but um, it just felt not, it just felt wrong. It was like, I am killing, like, I'm being dramatic, but I'm just killing my soul doing this stuff anymore. I can't do it. I can't stand tall with a straight face and tell a story like, yeah, I'm a leader. If I'm acting like this and just going for every, you know, small opportunity just because I have to pay the bills. There is a time for that, but it didn't feel like right. I had that excuse anymore. Like I needed to get bolder at that time. Mm, I love that. I needed to get bolder at that time. There is, I, it, so this is, I believe, episode like 73. So that is something that is came to a point, right? Like we always have that tipping point or that moment that we're like, okay, something must change. So everything coming together at once to just sweep it all away was really the, the turning point for you to just be like, okay, well, there's no going back to that. It's now time to get bold and make the shift. Yep. Yeah. That's cool. exactly what happened. Yeah. So where did you go from there? Like, tell us a little bit about like the upswing, like when you decided that's what was going to happen, how did that start to shift? Sure. So this all happened. I was visiting family for a holiday and, um, this was out in California and, um, my, I got on the airplane in basically a panic attack. Like I was like, I don't know what is next. And, uh, I realized that I had, there's always, I just feel like kind of weird saying this, but I'm just going to say it. Like in the 2000s, I created a mindset tool. It's now called the generosity practice, but at the time I didn't have a name for it. But it was a way of being where when I closed my eyes, I just imagined what kind of a contribution I wanted to be. Like if I could give anything to life, um, what would that be? And it was like an art form. It was a, it was something fun to do, but I also noticed that it was the fastest way for me to come out of pa panic and into calm. And I took that seriously because I just, I've had a life of anxiety. So when I find something that brings peace and calm and clarity, it really, it just caught my attention. And I always knew that when things hit the fan, <laughs> that I would finally lean on this thing, whatever it was, um, and take it like, and just really use it for all it was worth. Right. I knew there was something there for me. So I got on the airplane and I closed my eyes and I basically just did this practice for like the nine hours it took me to get back to the East coast. And I, pro I don't know what I must've looked like to the people around me on the two flights that I took, but it was like, I was in the zone. I'm like, this is working. This is working. And I kept 
offering, like just in my own mind, like there's a whole practice. I have three levels to this. It's all like a thing now, but at the time I was like, I'm just going to try stuff. So I just imagined myself giving things to life that felt right. And every single time I did it, it felt like something was getting integrated. I was moving in the right direction. The fear was subsiding and I was like, something was happening. It's really hard to describe, but it's like there was an alignment happening, right? Wow. And just to give it, I mean, not to, to tie it up with a bow, but honestly, when I got back, I knew exactly who I needed to contact. It was like, there were three people that I needed to reach out to. And when I did, I mean, that could have turned into months long chasing business right? Yeah. And I, I spoke with these three people. They all had beautiful, lucrative pro projects for me. Um, and within about a month, I had fantastic work. And it's like, wow. I couldn't even written that. St like, I couldn't have written the job description for the beautiful work that came my way. Um, and I, I mean, I've thought about what the heck happened for years. I've like tried to distill down like, what the, what? And to me, just to, you know, put a fine point on it, it's like when I decided that giving of myself and the joy of generosity was more important than my fear, that everything else became clear. Like my next steps just kind of unfolded before me. That's wow. what I, yeah, I could go on and on about that, but that's, that's what my brain is, is, that's the story that I'm telling myself right now about that. Yeah. yeah. No, and I mean, it's, it's very true because we definitely can look back at our situations and be like, okay, wow, like this is this point, this is what this point, and really then we get to kind of reflect and see, you know, what tools, what, what things really did benefit us and get us out of those slumps and really um, get us through the loop of, you know, the ups and downs of having success and having a lull and, figuring out the ups and downs because we go, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when we do. And to have tools that we realize are benefiting us, that's really powerful to really put a fine point on it and realize like, actually those practices were really serving me. And now when it happens again, you can continue to come back up faster. So how long was that time frame for you? Yeah. So I would say that, I mean, all right. How long was the time frame? There's a couple time frames that come to mind. One is how long did it take me to calm down from that fear? And literally that night, like usually when I hit this kind of panic, I will lose sleep for days and then I'll get sick and then I can't function. And it just can get really, I mean, it can get really bad, yeah. uh, which has been the big reason for health issues that I've had over the last 20 years. Like they're all fear-based, right? So the fact that I slept really well that first night uh it, and and kept sleeping well like night after night after night should tell you everything you need to know about how powerful this work is because typically i would that would be the first thing to go yeah. um so that that's one time frame then as far as again like getting some good projects in my um in my awareness like so i could make money again that took about a month and then, uh, then I realized, well, if it works for me, I want to know if it works for other people. So this happened in October initially. And by January 1, I was teaching my first workshop to people who were kind enough to just try it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I think that, and that is, that is so true. I love that you're talking about how we contribute. That is a huge thing. Um, that my virtual workspace and community, we're all about how we're giving back, how we're contributing to the people that are in our sphere. We say our world, right? Like my world, your world, because it's everyone that we can touch with, you know, giving value or contributing in whatever ways that we can with our talents and our, our gifts that we have or the tools that we create that can help other people move out of their situations faster and give them that support. So. That's super amazing. So um, where could someone find access to these tools? Are these all on your website? Yeah. And I should say that I'm a marketing and branding specialist. So it's like, well, what does this mindset tool have to do with anything? So I, I just want to make that connection. Um, the tool is called Generosity Practice. And you can go to generositypractice.com and it will take you right to the page. Uh, but 
just know that marketing is basically you and other humans connecting. And sometimes when we connect with other humans, especially in service-based businesses, it's all about building trust and it can get messy. We hit our stuff. We bump into other people's stuff. How do we actually stay human with each other, right? So what I've learned over the years is having the generosity practice is the first thing people do. Every person who works with me needs to do it because guess what? If you're in that contribution flow, for lack of better words, right, you are much bolder. That was my big discovery. You're bolder, you're clearer, you are obviously in service to the people you're marketing to because you spend so much time focusing on that anyway. Like so many things happen when you just decide what kind of joyful contribution you want to be for the day. Like it, yeah, it just translates right into sales negotiations and marketing. Boom. I love it. So she's got the tools for you and, and the brain behind the strategies and all this stuff too. <laughs> I love it. I, love I it. didn't so, know it was going to lead to marketing, but it just did. I mean, it kind of makes sense now, but yeah. That, that's a really fun thing too, is like how our little pieces of, you know, our journeys, they do add up to being like come full circle and kind of fall in line in, in alignment when, you know, when we need them and when other people need them from us as well. So I love that. Um, so, so with your story, what, um, that, that's one obviously really powerful thing. Was there any, um, anything outside of that, that you can really say for like advice to the viewers when they're feeling like in these situations or anxiety or any like tips or advice that you would like to give them? I would say that one of the biggest reasons I have experienced anxiety over the years is that I do not give myself a safe sandbox to play in. And what I mean by that is this, a lot of us who are progressive, open-minded and holistic, we focus on our limitless being, right? Oh, we can do anything. We can create anything. Just put your focus on this and it will manifest. Like I call that yes. And it's sort of like manifestation 1.0 2.0 to me is the awareness that we are humans in limited bodies and they have needs <laughs> and sort of like if you need to create money or if you need to create something physical that how about a time frame like for me i'll give you an example um without the generosity practice tool because i definitely that is a big answer right i think i've made that really clear that that's a really good way of being um, just go help people or go find a mindset that gets you into that contribution mindset. Yeah. Um, but that, you know, for example, for myself, I could say to myself, well, I'll just create clients because I'm limitless. And then I'll start getting these panic attacks because it's like, there's no clients coming in. And I don't give myself a time frame that says, if I don't get clients by September one, then I need to go to a plan B. Right. And not only right. just clients, it's three clients in the space of four weeks. Here are the things I need to do to create that. Right. Like it's sort of what are the grounded things that need to happen? And then what are the steps I can take to get there? And what is my plan B that I can fall back on so that my body is not wondering, okay, limitless being like, you got to show me some reality here. <laughs> like, you said it now what? Exactly. Like I need safety. I need steadiness. My body does, you know, my spirit's like, yay, let's try anything. Right. You need both. What's yeah. a good, stable, safe sandbox to play in. What are the healthy boundaries for that? Whatever it is you're working on or whatever it is you're creating. I think that is like, oh my God, I wish someone had just taken me by my shoulders several times and just been like, Christina, we love you. Please just make some choices around your sandbox. Yeah. Wow. No, I love that. I'm such a visual, like I'm a visual person to like put things into perspective for myself. So when you say, when you said sandbox, I immediately was like, okay, there's four things. We need clarity. We need focus. We need boundaries and we need action. Like I just built four walls with my sandbox. When you said sandbox, that's immediately like, what I focus on because I, I do a clarity mastermind where I talk about those things. But when you said sandbox, I, my mind directly was like, boom, I have a safe sandbox, but I never looked at it as a sandbox. Love it. Playing. And I'm all a little fun. So now that's a definite, definite visual for me. So I love that. Yeah. 
That very is awesome. fun. Um, okay, so something I love to ask because um, I love thinking about future. Um, where do you see yourself five years from now? You obviously have tools that really support you and going for what you're going for to contribute to your world. So where do you see yourself contributing in the next five years? So one thing that I, it's funny you asked me this because last week I had a really big aha moment around what's happening in our country and in our world, right? So um, one of the things I do with my clients is I help them find their deepest why in service to other people, right? So um, it's incredibly focusing, grounding, and motivating to know what that is, right? So, you know, one thing that, um, like the, the first step on that path, if I can just describe this really briefly, is to take what I call the innate marketing genius assessment. It's right on my website, innatemarketinggenius.com. It's free, it's five minutes. And you find out like, hey, am I a nurturer or am I a celebrator? And what that, there are five types and it basically describes, oh, you know, again, the deepest why. I'm a nurturer. My deepest why is making it safe for others to thrive. If I know I'm doing that, I am absolutely on my mission. I have my own way of doing it. There are many kinds of nurturers. Then you have adventure guides. I'll just describe a couple. Adventure guides are ones who are like, they take the bold action. Their deepest why is making sure their people are living it to the fullest and they see what's possible for them. It's amazing. Like these types are incredibly powerful. And my prayer is that everyone knows what their type is. So they know what their deepest why is because they're incredibly compelling. Um, okay. What I something that I listened to, and I won't go into the details, but something that I listened to last week made me realize a huge missing piece for America. And the reason I feel that we're crazy, I'm just going to say it like crazy yeah. as in we don't have the basic stuff handled like, oh, education for all and healthcare for all. Like these are not political issues. They are basic human functions. Like they are just things that any society just needs. It's just a no brainer on so many levels. Um, or that we hate each other for no reason, or that there's all this weird, dark, behind the scenes stuff, a la Jeffrey Epstein. Like we could just go on and on about the love, like the stockpiling of guns. They need to be, you know, the hugest defensive power in the world. Like there's just crazy. There's just so like huge crazy. So to me, that happens when we don't have our deepest why as a country, which I call the noble center of things. Like I think America, America has, wanted to stand for something noble since we began and that we've always been striving for that but we really have not we just haven't had that for a while like for decades and um and we're stuck and i hate saying that like i totally i think there's so much forward movement but it's not in a way that drives the whole thing forward together like there's right. little pieces and pods and god bless us all for you know um, helping each other in every way that you can. Rebecca, you're doing your part. I'm doing my part. Like we're all doing our part. Um, but what really became clear was that the unifying, loving, forward moving thing that really just brings us together and makes us stand tall as Americans. Not that I want to be a patriot just to be a patriot, but I want to be proud to be who I am and proud to be where I live and, and be part of something with everyone else. So, um, that's a huge missing piece. And, and I think whatever happens with my work, I feel like it's calling me in that direction. Like I did a Facebook live last week and I, I, I sort of shared where this came from. It's yeah. this awareness that theoretical physicists have not been able to do their work properly since 1973. I don't entirely know why, but when you don't allow the most innovative thinkers in our country to kind of just go nuts and have free reign, um, entire industries collapse. I'm not kidding. So um, that that's sort of where I feel like this is heading. It's just um, this will be part of the awareness that we, I mean, I know I don't have, a, I could talk to you about tangible stuff. Like I'd love to have a book published and I'd love to have people coaching the way I do. And like, you know, the whole structure of my business. But the deeper thing that's calling is, um, if we've lost our way, which I feel like we have, and that doesn't mean that there's not great work being done. Like there's so many amazing leaders in this country. Um, but I, I just, I would love to see this place and more and more people be open to the possibility that there could be a noble center to our country again. I don't know what it is. It could be something as simple as, 
hey, innovation, yes, we're for it. And we're here, you know, we're, we stand for compassion. I mean, these seem so obvious, but it has right. to be something we can all stand behind, something that has, I guess it's centripetal, like it kind of brings us in together while it moves us forward. Um, I don't know what that is, but I would love to be part of that dialogue. I feel called to create that dialogue with more and more people. It's like, are you open to having a noble center for our country, for your organization? For I mean, this is just new language I know for things people have talked about for a long time, but um, just, I don't know, like with the innate marketing genius work and generosity practice work, it just feels uh, like this is the next, the next step on that path is to apply it wider. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. I don't know where it's going to go, but. That's amazing. And I believe you like that sounds absolutely like we could use more of that. We could use we could use a center point to all of that and um, bring more people together, all of us that have the mindset that that is what we need. So beautiful. I, I love it. And I love that you you aren't just thinking about like the tangible things for your business. But again, that's probably another reason that you're a nurturer as you're talking about which I'm going to go take that quiz because I love um, knowing those things. And I'm going to be shocked if I'm not the adventurer one that you just talked about. <laughs> so I have a feeling that's maybe why you said that. Um, so, but I'm definitely going to go um, take that quiz. So um, just to like round this out then, yeah. where is the best place for everyone to connect with you? Is it on those sites where the, the tools are? Where is the best place to get in contact? Yeah, with so there's two places. One is innatemarketinggenius.com. Right. So that if you if you press the big pink button, that's your assessment right there. So you'll find out what genius type you are um, innate marketing genius .com. And then come join the geniuses. It's just the innate marketing geniuses on Facebook. It's a group. And that's where the summer marketing academy is. That's where we'll be talking about like, hey, adventure guides, like what are you up to and how are you leaning into that? And I'll just be really helping and supporting each type, you know, to just like thrive and really get out there and bring that deepest why to your marketing. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's so cool. Christina, yeah. thank you so much for coming on here, sharing your genius with us and the tools that you have. I'm super excited about all of that, but everyone that's watching, go connect with Christina, go grab those tools and assessments, um, check all that out, connect with her. Uh, let us know your biggest takeaway from today. Like, what did you what did you get from this experience with us? We would love to hear from you. Uh, remember to love yourself and live fearlessly. Christina, thank you so much. I'm so grateful for your time and totally appreciate you. Yeah, and I can't wait for the photos of you guys with your dog on your bike. Yeah. So, you know, don't <laughs> let me down. Thank you, Rebecca. You're welcome. Have a great day, everyone. Okay, bye.